I want to turn to uh, the gospel lesson today. Uh, Jesus encounters with his critics on some Sabbath issues. Uh, This is going to be coming to you from Mark chapter 2, beginning with verse 23. Hear now God's word to us. One Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? but they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. May God bless to us the reading of God's holy word. So I was away on study leave uh, the week of May 21 to the 26th, attending the Festival of Homiletics with my wife Jenny in Washington, D.C. Now whenever I would tell people the name of the conference, they would undoubtedly ask, what's that? To which I would reply, essentially it is a conference about preaching or the art of preaching. So you might ask, what activities do approximately 1,700 pastors engage in while attending a conference about preaching? Well, for one thing, they are let loose to worship without leading worship, attending three or more worship services each day, two or three lectures, and listening to some amazing preaching unleashed upon them by preachers from various traditions and backgrounds, all the while the nation's capital lingers in the background. It was truly an incredible week. Our text for Mark today is also about being unleashed. It is about the unleashing of God, a God that will not be bound by Sabbath rules or our rules, a God who deeply desires to be in close relationship with us, challenging the way we think, the way we do things, the way we live. After all, you and I, we all worship a God who likes to meddle. And that is exactly what God in Christ Jesus is doing here in our text. Meddling, unleashed upon the world, reminding us that our lives are meant for God and God alone. Now first, it's important to understand that for Jews, Sabbath observance observance lies at the very heart of their identity as God's faithful people. As a part of Torah law, it helped them resist the pressures to conform to the broader society, providing stability and an identifiable mark of holiness, of being set apart for God's purposes. But what we need to understand here in this story is that the Pharisees are not really concerned about keeping Sabbath laws because they and Jesus essentially agree that the Sabbath was created for humankind. Its original purpose was to provide rest for people who toiled in slavery and to promote life 
and extol God as their liberator. No, the issue for the Pharisees is that Jesus challenges their authority. Or as Jill Duffelt states, the issue is putting a stop to this Jesus who is disrupting the status quo and upending systems that keep the current power players in place. The Pharisees and the Herodians and many others in position of power do not care, not really, about keeping the Sabbath. They care about keeping their privilege. In the first example of breaking Sabbath protocols, we find the disciples walking through a grain field and plucking a few heads of grain because they were hungry. Clearly a practice that was permitted for hungry travelers according to Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 25. The offense comes when Jesus uses a story about David and his companions eating the bread of presence on the Sabbath, which was only to be eaten by the priest. That was perceived as Jesus comparing himself to David and to David's calling. The real scandal here is that Jesus presents himself as no ordinary rabbi or teacher, but as one given authority over the Sabbath. The second example of breaking Sabbath protocols occurs when a man with a withered hand enters a synagogue. In this example, Jesus expands their understanding of Sabbath and places this tradition in a brand new light. While treating non-life-threatening diseases on the Sabbath was not permitted, Jesus reframes the entire conversation saying, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? What Jesus actually does here in this example is to honor their prior understanding of Sabbath observance by doing absolutely nothing that could be construed as treating or healing this man with a withered hand. Jesus simply tells the man to stretch out his hand without touching him or saying a word of healing, and the man's hand is restored. Once again, Jesus is perceived as changing the rules, challenging the power and authority of the Pharisees, <clears throat> posing a dramatic threat to their leadership that will ultimately lead to his crucifixion. Ironically, those Pharisees, who on the surface were so concerned about Jesus breaking Sabbath protocols, then head out and desecrate the Sabbath by plotting how to destroy him. The claim and proof of authority makes Jesus a very dangerous threat to the Pharisees. Or as Charles Kosar comments, their carefully constructed religious structure lies much at risk in his presence. Their conspiracy to violence indicates just how clearly they perceive the threat. It ever remains so when Jesus challenges other competing claims, whether they be religious, ethic, ethnic, economical, or national. You see, here in this text, in this story about Jesus and the Sabbath, God's love is being unleashed. This text bears witness to the invasion of God's reign in the everyday human life, in the simple act of eating and hoping to be made whole again. This text is about the end breaking of God's love incarnate, where God's grace is unleashed and set free, allowing God to be God, challenging old patterns of religion and old patterns of being church. Now, of course, God does not need our permission to let loose. Rather, it is all about our ability to recognize when and where God is let loose upon our world. Are we constantly on the lookout for the inbreaking, life-giving reign of God? Or have we become like the Pharisees, afraid to give up our power and privilege, trying desperately to maintain the status quo 
at the expense of others. At the Festival of Homiletics, there was the unleashing of God's Holy Spirit through the act of worship and preaching. 1,700 pastors and preachers singing, shouting, laughing, clapping, stomping their feet, and praising God. Being challenged all the while to bear witness in their preaching to this God who is and who will be unleashed upon every aspect of our lives. Are we ready for the unleashing of God? Are we really ready to let God be God in our lives, in our communities, in our country, in our world? Are we ready to worship a God whose holy breath blows where it will? Are we ready for God to unsettle our settled and comfortable lives? I leave you with a few snippets from some of those amazing preachers that Jenny and I had the privilege of listening to at the Festival of Homiletics, or otherwise known as Woodstock for Preachers. <laughs> Here's one from Walter Brueggemann. Timid and meek prayers are a sign of losing heart, and we are called to pray without ceasing, to be an engaged agent of Christ's church. Jill Duffield. The goal of preaching is redemption, relationships, reconciliation, wholeness. Diana Butler Bass. Gratitude is about feelings and actions. It is about what you do with those feelings of gratitude. Otis Moss, who was our drop the mic preacher of the week, and who said very, very clearly to all of us, do not sanitize Jesus. Do not sanitize Jesus. May all of us become active agents for the unleashing of God in our world. May it be so. Amen. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you that indeed you are unleashed upon this world we live in. Each and every day, O oh Lord, help us to see how you are unleashed, to recognize your holy breath, your Holy Spirit moving in our midst. And may each and every one of us become agents of this, your church, of bearing witness to the good news of your love in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.